Great, Molly. Thank you so much for, for having me. Um, yeah, so, so today um, Molly asked me to just uh, give an overview of um, the, the, you know, this office's services and, and how we can uh, support uh, postdocs and, um, you know, proposal development types of services. Um, so, you know, just to give you some background, um, this is a fairly new office compared, there's another RD office, as you, some of you know, on the School of Medicine side, and that's been around for a, a, a lot longer. Um, but in 2017, the, the leadership of Duke said, oh, we really need to have something on campus. And that's how uh, OCRD started with, I'm, you know, I was the new director, new office, new to Duke, you know, all of that, um, all of that, you know, kind of scary stuff back then. So, you know, probably the first couple of years, it was a lot of just sort of starting up and fig figuring out things. But um, we've 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 settled in, and um, you know, our, our mission is to provide proposal development and proposal writing programming. Um, some of you have probably attended our events um, to you know help do, do faculty and the broader campus submit high quality. Um, uh, proposals. And um, our current staff is uh, two people, uh, myself and Brooke Gowell. She's the research development associate. And we're also um, in the process of hiring a senior research development associate. And just to give you a sense of just sort of like, you know, just tracking our, uh, our you know, the, the, the proposals that we touch and, you know, success, you know, we're we're now at about 172 million um, with 96 uh, proposals awarded, and you know it, it always continues to to go up. And our our uh, the number of proposals that we uh, that we help with, uh, you know, also every year just continues to go up as well. So we're, even though we're a small office, we're pretty busy. And proposal. This is a question that people will ask. Uh, uh, you know, oh, when when should we come to you? And you know, it really depends. Yeah, uh, I have people that have come to me, you know, pretty later on in the stages of proposal development, where they've already, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically developed uh, different parts of their proposal and you know, um, ready to submit. Uh, you know, in a few days or something, and they want to get some feedback. Although I wouldn't say that's the most ideal time to come, uh, especially if you're working on something like an F32 or a K99, where there's a lot of different components. And if you really want, um, uh, uh, you know, some some one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, support on those and and you know, especially if like, oh, you know, you could make this more in sync with the, the candidate information can be more in sync with, uh, you know, your, your research project. Uh, it's kind of hard to get that kind of feedback, you know, a few days before it's submitted. So ideally, you know, coming to us uh, earlier on in the process, you know, we can, we can work through some of those things. Um, and um, we also have toolkits to kind of help you, you know, kind of get started with, with proposals. So we have, we have toolkits that would be um, applicable to a lot of the interests of postdocs. Um, we pride ourselves in being timely and, you know, to, we try to pro provide excellent customer service. And then the other thing, maybe this is not as applicable to uh, the postdocs, but, um, but definitely with faculty who have um, you know, they're, they're working on a more team focused proposal um, where we, we try to work very collaboratively with, you know, the grants admins and the departments and that kind of thing. Um, generally with the single project proposals, we're working with just with the PI. Um, so pro proposal development, um, it, you know, we can do one on one consulting. Sometimes you might just access one of our toolkits. Um, and never, never reach out to us. And so, so uh, you know, it could go from just accessing one of our toolkits and, and never reaching out to more one-on-one -on -one help. We're, we're happy, we're happy to provide that. And as our, you know, office gets bigger, you know, we can definitely provide a, a more of that early career uh, type of one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, and, um, you know, the other thing to, to consider is, you know, we can also do uh, what we call pink teams or red teams. Uh, 
where you know it, it, it maybe in the beginning it's not just that you want feedback from us but maybe you want you want feedback from um a, a, a small a small group of say mentors or uh you know other people to to uh, get a sense of what your propo uh, proposal might be about and that's what the pink team would offer and um we've done pink teams where the pi has um just developed a PowerPoint and gave some ideas about what they're thinking about doing, you know, to some kind of early, early development proposal uh, to get some review. The other option is a red team. So that's more of a complete draft of sort of the main narratives of the proposal. And uh, uh, we would want those co complete drafts maybe about a month before uh, the, the actual uh, deadline, the sponsor deadline. And you know, so that you have enough time to, you know, take that feedback and 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 refine it and finalize your proposal. And then, you know, again, this is probably uh, I probably should have taken the last bullet out for for this presentation. But yeah, um, for some of the more complex proposal, we, we have convened, you know, site visits and that kind of thing. That would not necessarily apply to um, single project, um, you know, postdoc proposals. Um, we also uh, 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 hold events, about three to four events, uh, you know, every semester, and um, and uh, you know some of them are definitely you know relevant to postdocs, as well as even if you're a postdoc and you're not, you can't apply right away. Um, it's just good uh, for your own professional development. Um, so uh, you know. Um, the, the, these are the, this is the lineup that's coming up. We've already done the NSF intern, which focuses on graduate students, the NSF in, NRT, where, uh, you know, a faculty PI would have to apply, although it's relevant to graduate um, students, uh, like a, it's a comprehensive uh, training program. Um, the NIHR grant workshop is coming up. So again, there are sometimes postdocs can, uh, you know, get a waiver and apply as a PI to an, to an R grant. But even if you can't, say if you're helping a, a faculty member with, with their R grant, that might be a good um, workshop that you would want to go to. The NSF career is a little bit like you would have to be, you know, it's something you're always welcome to attend these. But for NSF career, that would be for um, the tenure track um, faculty. Um, so you'd have to be in, in that position to, to apply. But again, if it's for your own professional development, you're curious, you want to be an academic someday, um, you know, that, that might be something just of interest currently for your professional development. Um, and we're trying to do an NEH workshop. Now, for um, uh, we do a K99 every fall. And on our website, uh, we we uh, might still have the recording, but at the very least, we have the um, handout of the presentations, and we also have a toolkit that you can access at any time for, for the K99. We also have an F32 uh, toolkit, and um, we don't do a, 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 a specific presentation on F32s, but we've certainly done um, uh, events with, uh, you know, for Molly uh, on F32s. Um, let's see. And then um, we also, uh, something to think about, I don't know if this applies to that many postdoc level opportunities, but we do co-coordinate many of the federally funded limited submissions. Um, so your, you know, faculty who you might work with, they might, you know, talk about those that, that, that um, you know, if you ever help on one of those limited submissions. And we're also the administrative liaison for the Duke ORNL collaboration. So if you're ever interested in, you know, ORNL is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So if you're ever interested in, you know, seeing what opportunities there are with Oak Ridge, um, uh, you know, happy to happy to chat with you uh, relating to that. Um, so I guess that's it. Or or uh, connect you with the um, the faculty liaison. Um, uh, uh, Stefan ba Bass in in physics, who can you know maybe help direct you to to certain um, opportunities or facilities or that kind of thing. And that's pretty much it. Um, um, our website. So just one thing about our website: you can always go to our website now. Now, um, <coughs> our website will eventually be 
basically transitioning into being a part of the Office of Research and Innovation website starting sometime in the summer. But now, you know, basically uh, the, the current website that I have there, the URL is, is active. So are there, you know, are there any other, you know, any questions or, you know, anything I can, I can um, answer or comment on? I have a question, Sahini. Um, could you talk about how your office interfaces with the Office of Research Support and the Office of Research Administration? Yes, yes. Well, um, so Susan Lasley, who's in the Office of Research Support, she's my go-to whenever, whenever there is something relating to um, people need to upload things in the system or, or you know, they need a uh, uh, you know, a, a login administrative access to, you know, research.gov or whatever it might be. Um, there might also be, you know, some questions that they're, the grants admin cannot ask. And I might, you know, if, if a PI is asking me for those, um, those questions, I'll connect them with, um, with ORS that way. For ORA, you know, I don't have a very, as, as like a, a go-to contact, but if if um if I'm working with someone in medicine and I know that that's where they're going to be going to, um, probably um, there there is one person that I probably would reach out to uh in ORA and and see if they can they can help. You know, the other thing is that we we also have the 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 point of contacts at the at the um. Um, the, the departmental level for um, the ORS or for ORA. And so we might also reach out to them if there is some kind of, and what kinds of questions that those would be. Those would be maybe, you know, if the grants admin and the department can't answer them, it would be more things like budget questions or um, uh, uh, system types of things, loading, how do you load something, that kind of thing. So oftentimes we will we will bring them in. Um, we are very, we like to work very closely with the departmental grants administrator. Um, you might, as postdocs, you might not hear about that coordination as much for single project types of uh, proposals, since we're normally just working with, but there are times when we do work with the grants administrator if there are questions that kind of relate to budget and stuff, and we don't really get involved in the budget. Does that answer your question, Molly? It does. Thank you very much. Um, I know that sometimes postdocs are like, you know, there are all these offices that have research in the name and I don't know where to start. So um, that was a helpful overview. Yeah, I mean, one one way for, for postdocs to look at our office, like, so we, you know, we are, we, we try to uh, collaborate as much as possible and, you know, we don't want to duplicate efforts. So what we're doing is, and 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 grants administrators administrators are not necessarily doing this. Is you know we're looking at narratives of your proposal. We might be helping um, even 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 developing some of the non technical sections if you wanted us or or to develop a draft of it or something. So those are the kinds of things that um, you know a grants administrator may not necessarily be be helping with. Thank you, Sahini. Are there other questions for Sahini? All right, Sahini, I think that means that you answered all the questions. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I recognize it's a small group and you know, please feel free to to reach out. And like I said, we do have the the F32 and the K99 toolkit and you know, for the most part, it's updated. It's updated with the D the new DMS stuff. And every year, I will make I will make updates. Um, uh, 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 to, you know, just maybe like, uh, uh, you know, just re refreshing. You know, some of the language. And I, I'm always trying to improve upon the toolkits that we have. You know, so they've they've gone through different iterations and you know that kind of thing. So. Um, so yes, please feel free to to use those. If you have any questions about any of the content, happy to answer that as well. If you want to reach out, 
Super, so Amy, thank you so much. And I do recommend those toolkits all the time. So thank you everyone for attending today. We appreciate it. And we will see you later on. Have a great uh, rest of the week. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.